this third book in the big book is mainly student number information. Other than a chapter on how to use timers and sound makers in your room, and a really great chapter on how to deal with unfinished assignments. If you can't get a handle on unfinished assignments, that'll bring you to your knees. But I cracked the code on that, came up with a very easy way to, to deal with unfinished assignments, just changed how I responded to all those, I'm not done, changed the whole thing. But other than that, it's all about numbers. And for me, my experience with numbers started in junior high school. My seventh grade coach. Where are the coaches in the room? Coaches, where are you guys? Got some coaches in the room. Yeah, my coach showed me the power of numbers. And speaking of coaches, when I go to the neighborhood school to do some little game stuff with the fifth graders, I now have an electronic whistle. Which means I can keep the whistle in my hand and still play the game with the kids. And we're playing this game I made up called Speedball. And it's kind of like basketball, so you have traveling and get violations. Doesn't have to come up here. It's in my hand. I'm playing the game with the kids. When there's a violation, I just hit that and play just stops. Because if you try and talk, hey, 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 take time out. Stop. Everybody stop playing. That'll kind of wear you out. Anyway, seventh grade, first day, coach walks us down to the basketball courts. And on about eight of them were these numbered grids. And he took attendance the first day. Signed us each a number. My number was 24. He said, gentlemen, this is where we meet for PE. Tomorrow, change your gym clothes. Meet me down here. Uh, we'll get going. And he threw out some basketballs. We're just goofing around street clothes. Now, second day, second day, I'm on the basketball court talking to my buddies. Here comes Coach Biden. We all got in our number. This guy took attendance in three seconds. Three seconds, which really spoke to that efficiency engine inside of me. He's just looking at the empty numbers. All right, let's see what we got here, gentlemen. We have uh, Hagen and uh, Timmons. Let's go. I was like going, yeah, that was nice. Then we get to the field. He said, odds in the outfield, evens are up. Stunning. But I didn't see numbers as a student teacher. Didn't see them as a new teacher. It wasn't until the end of year five. End of year five, I'm teaching in a Navy housing area. The transient rate was 107%, which meant I was gaining or losing a student every 10 days. So all the name maintenance stuff in my room was killing me. End of year five, it's funny what you remember in a career, I'm scraping little file labels off some pegboard because I had these little hooks in this pegboard thing. And some of those labels were like eight and nine thick because I kept putting new names on top of old names. Kids are coming and going. I'm scraping these labels off going, there's got to be a better way. Hey, I thought about my coach. Man, if I had numbered those hooks and numbered the students, I'd never have to do this again. And wow. Did it get better? Secondary guys, here's the secret for you guys. Number one, I recommend you only start numbering one class. Pick your favorite class. They'll support you and keep you going. Give yourself a month with that pilot class and then much easier to expand to everybody else. By starting with one class, you don't make the same mistake six times. <laughs> but here's the secret. Three digit numbers. That's it. Of course, the math guys are going, oh yeah, of course. 100 numbers, the period designator. And the rest of it's their actual student number within the group. So much better. And I've been sharing these ideas 31 years. I'm in Pomona. This is like, I don't know, 15 years ago. And uh, I was there for like a three-day thing. And at one of the breaks, lady came up and said, okay, Rick, what was that three-digit number thing again? And, f and just so you know, I'm not a math person, Rick. I don't like math. I teach English. So what was that whole three-digit number thing? And I explained to her again. In the exact same ways, if that's going to help, right? And then she went, you mean like a hotel? And it was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Is that what I've been trying to say all these years? Yeah, thank you, English person. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in charge of the middle school motel, all right? You're thinking, the place has been renovated, it's been painted, it's been all stripped down. I gotta put numbers back up in the rooms. You know what? I'm not gonna put floor numbers on. It's just more money, buying more numbers we don't need. There's only, I mean, come on. When you're on the first floor, there's only one room 17. Which is, which is a nice idea until you run into this problem. It's a lot of uncertainty right there. No, we'll do it the intelligent way. Just like a hotel. That way only one student in your day owns that number. That's key for you guys. But imagine if you had a bunch of mixed up assignments, period to period. Any student could separate them by 100 group, which is the period group, and then collate within, within that. 
And look at that. No more name labels on the cubbies. Yay. Do it once. Good forever. Question. They're going to have three different numbers. And they'll keep it all straight. Disaster drills. For the first time in my career, they're bearable. First five years, I realized why, why we call these things disaster drills. Because I had no plan, no system. I'm in the middle of class teaching. All of a sudden, it's like, wah, wah, wah. Oh, man, here we go. And I had to walk him out the playground. Best I could do would be to count heads. That was my plan. Hold still, I got to count you. I said, hold still. And I come up with 28 instead of 30. All I know is I'm missing to you. I don't know who it is. Principal's over there with a clipboard and a stopwatch waiting for my report. No pressure there, rookie. Yeah. You could ask the kids. That's a beauty. Who's missing? Yeah, try that. Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I walk to the playground with my guys. I pick a good spot. And I'm going to show this gesture. We made this up. You can make up your own gestures. It's okay. And that meant, please get in numerical order. If students have a number, the teacher should have a number. And the best number to be is zero. Because you're out of the group, but a part of the group. So at zero, I pick the spot. My guys all line up. And they will never do it smoothly the first couple of times. Oh, third grade, first time we explain it all you want to in the classroom. Doesn't matter. <laughs> when you're out there and you do that, it's like, boom, you got a wad of kids right here. All right, honey. Aren't you number 12? Yeah, we got to squeeze 11 kids right here, okay? <laughs> you want to back up there, sister? Thanks. <laughs> By the fifth time, though, as they're coming out to the line, they, I know who's in front of me. I know who's behind me. This is my spot. And that's the beauty of numbers. There's structure to numbers you can depend upon. And now all I say is count off zero, and they count off. And you'll know right away if you're missing somebody. Eleven. Oh, Fabian, who had gone to the resource room before the drill. Now I'm looking around the playground for Karen, the resource teacher. There she is with four kids, and Fabian's one of them. Sweet. Not with me, but accounted for. And then 28. So, oh, that's Stephanie. Thank you. Two students are gone, I know who they are, I know where they are, and it just gets better. Although I mentioned this in episode three when I was talking about magnetic number tiles, I thought a reminder might help, especially for anyone considering using student numbers for the first time. Numbers aren't harsh, they're not impersonal, there's no loss of identity. All of our interactions are name-based, but the numbers allow the teacher and the students to really help keep things organized. Thanks for watching.